united with Christ. Meet local churches with open doors serving throughout the Border Valley community and sharing the truth and hope of God's love and salvation. A presentation of Life Christian Broadcasting Television. And now, United with Christ. Good morning, everybody. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. This morning, we're going to enjoy the Lord. We're going to enjoy His Word, and we're going to do it all for His honor and for His glory. This is Pastor Ernie Rodarte, pastor from the Rose of Sharon uh, Church and Christian Academy. We're over there uh, by the Lower Valley. You know, as uh, Yarborough Street ends, about a block before you get to the border, for the border freeway, that's where we are established. So I would invite any one of you, you know, that you don't have a place to uh, worship and um, you are looking for a church, we invite you to come to the Rose of Sharon Church. We have our, 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 uh, our services on Sunday at 10 o'clock. And by the way, we have English-speaking services and Spanish-speaking services. So we invite you to come to our church if you don't have a place to go and worship. And worship, we must do it. Worship God with all of your being, with all of your soul, with everything that you have. Worship Him. In this morning, we're going to worship Him. So our Heavenly Father, we draw nigh unto the throne of grace right now under the power of the Holy Spirit. We say, Lord, say this, Lord, to you. Take over through your Holy Spirit. Take over this program, Father. And everything that we say and everything that we think and with everything that we send forth, Father. Yes, your word will be sent forth, Father. That it will work because the Holy Spirit is in control right now. So we thank you, Lord. We pray for the people that are sick right now. We pray, Father, that you would heal them. Heal them, Father, by your power right now. Heal them by your power, Father. And lift them up, Lord Jesus, so they will praise you and worship you and give you all the honor and all the glory. And we thank you, God. We receive your word, Father. We thank you for your word. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we do pray and thank you, Lord. And again, Lord, um, uh, we ask that the Holy Spirit would guide. You know, every time that I come out or go preaching or teaching or something, I ask the Holy Spirit to take over, you know, take over my eyes, my mouth, and everything that I say, you know, so that it won't be me. You know, it'll be the Holy Spirit working through me. So I thank the Lord for that, you know. You too that are listening. Last time uh, uh, that I was with you, we were discussing the authority and the power, the authority and the power of the believer and how we have to start using it. I want to, you know, stop, uh, uh, stop uh, being defeated by Satan. Every time he comes, no, you know, but now under that restored authority that God has given us, the church, you know, I'm going to use it for the honor and glory of God. And I'm going to come against the infernal powers. I'm going to come against the enemy with it. It is not something, you know, that we're very uh, religious or very uh, uh, spiritual. It, it comes from the word of God. The Word of God says that we have all power and all authority because the Lord Jesus Christ uh, rescued that power. He took it away from Satan. Satan, you know, up, up there uh, in the uh, mountain temptation, Satan came to tempt the Lord. And the Lord responded, the Lord Jesus Christ, with the Word. God, uh, God has said, God has said, you know, it is written, it is written, God has said. And he defeated Satan right there and then in the Mount of Temptation with the word of God. And then he went on to rescue the power and authority that Adam and Eve had lost over there in the Garden of Eden. Through deception, Satan came and took away the keys, the government, the blessings, the power and the authority that God had given these two wonderful creatures that he had made for himself, Adam and Eve. And now, you know, we were left 
totally defeated. But now the second Adam, as the word of God says, came to earth. Yes, God came to earth through the Lord Jesus Christ. He took on the covering of humanity and he came to earth to rescue, to restore those keys, the keys of power and authority and give it back to men. We discussed that last time that I was with you. We discussed the position, you know, that uh, the Lord Jesus Christ has right now above everything. He is above everything over demon spirit, over principalities, over powers. Is everything. He's the owner of everything. He's the creator of everything. So he is up there with full power and authority. And I'm reminded that in the book of, uh, uh, of uh, Matthew, the gospel of Matthew chapter 28, the last chapter right there, the Lord Jesus Christ has his little group of believers, the church, as he was to ascend into heaven and sit at the right hand of almighty God. God the Father. And he told them, hey, all authority, all power is given unto me. Therefore, go and preach the gospel. Amen. Go and, you know, teach the people. Teach them all the things that I've had taught you. And lo, I am always with you, even unto the end. Of the world. So you see, all authority, and I use the word exousia, which means authority and power. Authority and power. And Jesus said, All is given unto me. So we're gonna today, we're gonna look at the church and the authority. Last time I was, was with you, we we're looking at the authority that we as believers have. And I uh, uh, share with you how we can start using that authority to come against uh, uh, the enemy, to come against Satan, to come against the infernal powers, to bring retribution to the spirits out there, to the governments, to the powers, you know. And uh, 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 today we're going to uh, see the church and its authority, the authority that has been given to the church. So I'm going to read from God's word. I want to share it with you from the book of Matthew, chapter 16. And let us, let, let us look at, uh, uh, at uh, uh, verses 13 through 18. When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do you men say that I, the Son of Man, am? So they said, Some say John the Baptist, some Elijah and others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus answered and said to him, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed that to you, but by my father who is in heaven. And I also say to you, that you are Peter, and on this right I will establish my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. We're going to look right here at three characteristics of the church. Of the church. And by the way, church is not a building, church is not the temple. Church is not the synagogue. Church is the people that God has pardoned, redeemed, and set apart. Church is the people. See, every Sunday, you know, when we uh, wake up, we said, we're going to go to church. We're going to go to church. You know, we're going to go to that building where we congregate together. As we usually do, says the word of God, you know, to praise and worship. It is the people, the people, the people that God forgave, rescued, and restored, and gave them all power and all authority on this earth. As a matter of fact, I'm going to say something. 
we are the church of the representatives of the Lord Jesus Christ here on earth under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is God. So you see, it is the Holy Spirit right now in his dispensation that is guiding the church, teaching the church, pulling the church. He's there, the Holy Spirit. And uh, when, I began, when the program uh, uh, began, I asked the Holy Spirit to take over. We should be listening today to the voice of the Holy Spirit. We should be listening today to the voice of the Holy Spirit. He's here right now. He's in your heart. He's inside you. He's everywhere. So he is the guide right now. The Lord Jesus Christ out there in the chapter 14 and 16, he said, I have to go to the Father because if I don't go, I cannot send you the Holy Spirit. I cannot send you the Comforter. So it is the Holy Spirit right now. He said, I will send him and he will take of what's mine and show it unto you. So it is the Holy Spirit right now that is guiding the church. And he that hath an ear, listen to what the Holy Spirit is saying unto the church. And the church has power and authority that they should be using right now. Throughout the Old Testament, you know, uh, worship had always been centered in the temple, around the tabernacle, or in a synagogue. There was no church. The first mention of the church is here in chapter 16 of Matthew. And it is the Lord Jesus Christ. So we're going to see three very important characteristics of this church. First of all, we're going to look at a foundational, foundational truth. Peter knew by the revelation of God the Father that the Lord Jesus Christ was the Son of the living God. That is a foundational truth. This was the truth upon which the church was to be built. See, the Lord Jesus Christ didn't say that he was going to establish his church on Peter. Because Peter was, it means uh, 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 Petros, 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 a small rock. But Petra is a big rock. And we know by the word of God that the big rock is the Lord Jesus Christ. So the Lord Jesus Christ was going to establish his church on him and on this foundational truth that, that, that the Lord Jesus Christ was the son of the living God. And then the, uh, um, uh, uh, the, the first uh, uh, characteristic of the church that we see here is that the church would be built by the Lord Jesus Christ, not by men. Listen to this, not by traditions, not by programs. The Lord Jesus Christ would build his church upon the foundational truth that he was the son of the living God. And the second characteristic that we see here. Now listen, the first characteristic is that the Lord Jesus Christ would build his church. He is the builder of the church. He is the owner of the church. And as a matter of fact, right now, he's seated at the right hand of God right now, waiting for his bride that is being prepared by the Holy Spirit. And one of these days, the Holy Spirit will present this bride, the church, the church will present it to God, his bride. The Lord Jesus Christ is waiting for his bride. And he's also waiting for the church to wake up and become the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we are going to have to do whatever we're going to have to do as the representative of the Lord Jesus Christ here on earth. And again, under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. He is waiting also in heaven, seated at the right hand of God, waiting until we put all nations under his feet. Make a stool of all nations and put, him, put, put, put them under his feet. So the second characteristic that we see here 
of the church is that the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Now listen very carefully. The hordes of hell, bad spirit, Hades, will not prevail against the church. One of the things that, uh, you know, then why in the world are we letting Satan defeat us every time? Why is he taking our children? Why is he defeating the church? Why is he creating chaos and confusion? Why is he attacking our economy? See, we as believers are going to have to take that authority, God-given authority, restored authority, and use it for the honor and glory of God and come against the enemy. Come against Satan. Right now, his position is a position of defeat. The Lord Jesus Christ defeated him at Calvary. And then the Lord, after he had uh, uh, told the Lord, uh, uh, it, is, it is finished. Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. He went in, then he went into the deepest of the earth, of hell, and right there, He defeated Satan because on the third day, he arose in the power of his resurrection. And he took the keys of hell and death from Satan. He took the keys of government that Satan had stolen from Adam and Eve. He took them away from him and he resurrected victoriously and defeated Satan Totally. So the position of Satan right now is a total, complete defeat. And Jesus put him under his feet. And in the book of Ephesians, if you see over there in the first chapter, all this power, all this authority, and all the position of the Lord Jesus Christ, he handed all, he handed all of this over to the church, over to the believers. See, so the believers have also Satan under our feet. The believers have Satan under their feet. So why in the world do we let him come and defeat us? The power and the authority and dominion that Adam and Eve had, and they lost it. Satan beguiled them, defeated them. See, Satan has no power. All he has is a lot of lies. He comes to destroy, to kill. So uh, 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 why in the world are we letting him take over our communities, our cities, our nation? And right now, our nation is in chaos. Our nation is in confusion. So where is the church? We as believers have to say, here I am, Lord. Here I am, Holy Spirit. Use us, you know? And we're going to have to take again the reins of government. Hmm? And use all this power and all this authority that God, that, that the Lord Jesus Christ restored to us, the church. And so the, the second characteristic here of this powerful church, and I'm saying powerful church, is that the gates of hell will not prevail against it. In the Amplified Bible, we read it like this. Listen to this. I will build my church and the gates of hell, the powers of the infernal region shall not overpower it or be strong to its detriment or hold out against it. This is what the Amplified Bible uh, uh, reads. Now, the Lord has given us keys. As I got out of the car today, as I arrived here at the station, and I was looking for the keys, I had put them in my pocket, you know. For what? Keys for what? To open and to close. See, the church has the power to bind and to loose. That's the third characteristic of this church, the power to bind and loose. Okay? In Matthew uh, 16, 19, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. There are three things. Now listen, church. 
Listen, beloved ones. Listen to this. The church would be built by Jesus on the revelation from the Father that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. First characteristic of the church. The second characteristic is this. The gates of Hades will not be able to hold out against the church. And the third characteristic here, the church would be given the keys of the kingdom of heaven and have the power of binding and loosening. This is one um, thing that we're going to have to learn. We have the power to open and to close. close. So whatever, you know, we, uh, uh, the word of God says that whatever, whatever, you know, we lose here on earth, we lose, we will really lose in heaven. Mm. And whatever we bind here will be bound also in heaven. That's tremendous power and authority that has been given to the church, to the believer. And believer right now, you know your position. God, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ has put Satan under your feet too. Don't let him. Come, and you know, uh, Satan, if he has power, that would be the power of deception, deceit. He comes to beguile us. He comes to tell us things that are not true. So you shouldn't live. Today, uh, the church, which is supernatural in essence, we are supernatural in essence. We have been generated of the spirit. We live us Christians have to live in a spiritual word in the aura of the Holy Spirit. Our, uh, 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 our business right now, the church, the believer, Christians, you know, we live in a supernatural world. We live under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Our spirits have been regenerated. So we're going to have to learn to walk in the spirit so that we will not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. Our thing is a thing of the spirit. We're spiritual beings now. Thank you, Lord, for that. Okay. And, and uh, um, the church would be given the keys of the kingdom of heaven and have the power of binding. The keys have been restored. And what are the keys? What are the keys? Or oh, what are the gates? You know, that's a... a, 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 a Something that uh, we have to learn, you know, that when uh, uh, we, the mention of keys come or gates, mean, that's the government, government. It pertains, all of this pertains to government. So the, key, the keys of government, the Lord Jesus Christ restored that over to the church, was given to the church. So now we have the, also the power to open and close to lose and bind. And we have to learn that power so that we can use it against Satan. And every time that Satan comes against you, use the word of God. Bind the enemy. Bind the enemy. Then, hey, listen, Satan, you don't have any power at all. You don't come in here and telling me what to do. No, I'm going to tell you what to do. So be gone in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and under the power of his word and under the power of his blood. You are gone right now in Jesus' name. You cannot put on me sickness. You cannot put, put on me poverty. No, 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 no. I am. I, we are the sons and daughters of God. So Satan, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by the power of his blood, be gone. You know, throw him out. He's got no power. He will flee from you. Satan will flee from persons that know the word of God, that know their authority, God-given authority, God-given power that has been restored to them. So we're going to have to start using these wonderful keys that the Lord Jesus Christ has given us, you know, to close and to shut, to shut and, and, and close and then to open. So with these keys that the Lord has restored to me, this government, this authority, this power that God has given unto me, I will use it to close, to shut Satan's 
keep him out and bring by faith the Lord Jesus Christ. So we praise you, Lord. So we give you the honor and the glory forever. And thank you, Lord. So again, remember these characteristics of the church. Remember your power. Remember your authority that you have. First of all, the church would be built by, the, by Jesus on the revelation of the Father that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Second, the gates of hell will not prevail against his church. No, the church prevails against him. Okay? And the church would be given the keys of the kingdom of heaven and have the power of binding and loosening. So right now, Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and through the power of his blood, I'm ordering Satan to get out of the lives of the believers right now. I come against you, enemy, right now in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and take your hands off of the people of God. And Heavenly Father, I ask for your power right now, Father, to indwell us again totally, Father, totally as believers. We love you, Lord Jesus. Yours is the honor and the glory forever, Lord Jesus. And Father, right now, right now, I come against Satan and I'm ordering him to take his dirty hands off of those people that are sick. How dare you, Satan, put sickness in, on the sons and daughters of God. In Jesus' name, be gone. And by the beautiful blood they came from his stripes, you have been healed Right now, receive this by faith, believers that are listening right now. So we thank God for everything. We thank God for his blessings. And Lord, we're going to use this power and authority under the guidance of the Holy Spirit to give you honor, glory, and power and bless you. We bless you, Lord. We love you. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. And thank you, Lord, for this time that we have been with you. Do not forget, you know, if you have any answers, uh, uh, forgive me, if you have any questions and we can answer them, call in, you know. And if you have a, 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 a prayer need, call in. We will pray for you. I will pray for you as I have done right now. So believers that are listening right now, we'll see you next Tuesday. And confessing this, that Jesus is still on the throne of grace and he is Lord. Blessed be his holy name.